like that we jump right back into the Scorch for some continuity carryover from the last movie. Post-apocalypse vehicle modification. With only two words spoken so far in this cold open action set piece, we know exactly what the mission is and who the players are. Rescue Mino from Wicked and look cool while doing it. This is crazy, Thomas! That's what I said. Actually, the first thing I said when they straddled the tracks was, that's a good way to blow a tire. Seriously, that's my way. But this whole thing seems like a good way to get seriously injured and not be able to show up to work for a year. Yep. And don't worry, Barry Pepper doesn't even need any skin on his knees. Michael Bay style explosion censoring. Okay, so that seems convenient, but I'll say this. While Newt's hiding spot is pretty close to where they stopped, they mentioned later that they had been planning this for months. Brenda and Jorge were distractions to give them enough time to separate the cars, and then it was just a matter of timing it right to end up on the other side of the hill where Newt's hiding. Squirrely bastard. Compliments. And this is just good planning. Ambushes happen and they work. It's not like this little alcove in the rocks would be hard to draw them into, because it totally seems like Jorge made a mistake, and it's a perfect spot to surround them quickly. Anti-Stormtrooper aim against Stormtroopers. See, Barry Pepper was a Bible-quoting sniper in a past life, so I don't even have to justify his accuracy. What a way to open this film. Full tilt action scene building to a serious crescendo all before the title card. West Ball and T.S. Nolan always strike me as people who don't want to let anything be missed. Most people wouldn't notice the container being tarped, but of course they have to since Wicked is always searching from the air. Just great continuity and realism. Don't worry. When I crank out, you'll be the first to know, okay? A little death cure shadowing. Wait, what, what's this movie called? Dang it, I am still in love with the sound design in these films. Listen to that growl. Don't be a twat about it. I'm already in. Here's your heart of this movie and really the series. The lengths these friends will go to for each other. It all changed when Thomas ran into the maze to save Mino and Albie. By the way, here's your teaser frame from last week. Just as an aside, this may have been the first teaser frame where it looks like only three people got it so far. I guess I gotta ease up. No. That's terrifying, even if it is a dream. Actually, especially because it's a nightmare. Hey! Hey, it's Albie, Chuck, and guy's name I can't remember. Speaking of sound design, that's so similar to the original Gates in the Maze. And of course that sound would be a permanent piece of his subconscious. Just be thankful you got a chance to run again. Ma maze to maze run again. Yeah, that checks out for Nightmare Fuel. Also, I don't love it because it's terrible, but Mino's such a badass they had to disable him to really get the full terror effect. It's not as effective as the maze, but it seems to be working. I, g I get what you're trying to do here, and I also understand why some people may have been confused. The basic idea is that the fear in whatever happens in the maze produces this cure enzyme for the serum. That's why all the kids were strung up in the second movie right after the maze, and it's why they're inducing nightmares in Mino now. I don't want to come across as too negative, but I mean, if I was a crank, that's exactly where I'd be. No, if you were a crank, you'd be dead. But some decent lampshading to discuss how bad of an idea it is to go into the dark tunnel with the neon crank's welcome sign above the entrance. Help me! Whew, that's new. Harder to abandon someone when they appear to be newly infected and still speaking. So the car flipping on its roof was a total accident that thankfully no one got hurt in and they were able to use it in the movie as an extra long shot. Saving your buddies Halo 1 style. Jorge and Brenda to the rescue. Spent three years trapped behind walls trying to break out and now we want to break back in. Astute observations. James Dashner is still on the wicked board. We've sacrificed a lot to get this far. Yeah, like all your friends. I just, I actually appreciate the gray area that Teresa exists in. You can't really blame her for her decisions at this point. I want to remember, if we find a cure, that's the only way all this was worth it. That's so important, since Teresa isn't just experimenting on random kids now. It's arguably her friend. She wants to own it and keep her memories. I can help you with that, those memories. There's no reason to keep holding on to them. It's a simple procedure. There is a reason. Anyone else get a Shawshank Redemption Brooks was here vibe from this twinkly piano theme from Baizano? Sprite bottle gas mask. Also, it's interesting that the population has realized the flare is airborne seemingly before Wicked has. The drone sweep picked him up outside the walls. Get the guns online. As dumb as that decision seems, I mean, you know where he is. He has a tracker in his neck. Send a group of storm ninjas down there to capture or execute or whatever. But this movie starts off right away sort of bringing us around to Ava's thought process and allowing us to sympathize with Teresa and Ava both. They think they're doing the right thing. So to have a totally self-serving villain like Jansen just looking to kill Thomas balances that out. 
you know, you'd think by now Thomas would know that amazingly terrifying sounds are always followed by something terrible. Hey, Greeny. What a sick reveal and twist! I did not see that coming. On a second viewing, it's clearly Galley, but he's dead, so you're not looking for him. Also, you could be asking yourself why doesn't Galley just reveal himself now, and this is why. He wanted a situation that was under his control so that Thomas couldn't escape, because why would Thomas hear him out if he didn't have to? Kinda had that coming. Owning your sins. Glad to see you made it back. Jesper told me what happened. Hey, Boyd Holbrook. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nah, he's fine, guys. He's fine. I like how they show us the other side of the infected in this film. Most of the cranks were just crazy zombies in the squirt trials. So showing this transition period sort of throws a new light on the whole thing. You show a lot of compassion with someone who just opened fire on a crowd. Ha! <laughs> compassion. Yeah, he's just infected. Beautifully epic city with more awesome sound design around every corner. So the wall is definitely cool, I just think the pitch towards the city is an interesting choice. I guess just be thankful there aren't any Colossal Titan infected. Be walking right up that wall. Don't lie to me! Don't lie to me! Stop it. You can't take Newt. I don't care how great Thomas Brody Sangster is at switching back and forth. Min Ho? Min Ho? Min Ho? While I'm not sure who Min Ho is... Everything we're doing here... It's working. I like that they take the time to further prove that Teresa really believes in the cause to find a cure. The end of Scorch Trials felt so heartless, but greater good, you know? At least, she thought so. If he disappears behind that bus... Hey, cliché dodge. He just turned around. At least we gave them the tools they'll need to survive. Is that a book reference? I feel like it is. But it's definitely the best reason to have put them in the maze trials. If that was the end goal for them to survive, if all else failed, those kids proved they could do it. We're gonna ask you some questions. And you're going to tell us exactly what we need to know. Now, we know you have Mino in the building. Where? He's with the others in holding. Sub-level three. Another cliche dodge. Didn't have to torture her even a little to get that info. Is it okay over here? Yeah. Yeah, we're done. Ooh, double entendre burn. Now we get into the straight-up rescue-slash-infiltration mission with disguises and subterfuge, which is what this has been leading to, and it's really fun watching them all silently assemble. Then there's some cat-and-mouse moments with Jansen, and then just the three of them kicking butt. His little finger saved the day. One friend to another. Thomas is here. First hint that Jansen has his own plans that don't include Ava. Does she know? No, she can't. I need her to stay focused. Hayden Gillen is so amazing. With no words, you can watch him piecing things together. Love that even while Newt and Thomas are searching for Mino, he's working on his own escape plan because he's not some passive damsel. Maybe they didn't have combat training quite like this, but man, is it fun to watch Newt and Thomas commando out. I mean, Dylan is an American assassin. <laughs> <laughs> Mino's always good for a charge attack. Also, badass good guy. Any ideas? Maybe. Haven't you learned never to ask Thomas that? Okay. It's doable. Just need a little running start. <laughs> Mino's face. <laughs> Okay, that's freaking awesome. The cameraman jumping out the window with them? That is a great shot. Also, water impact censoring. Get on your knees with your hands in the air. Callie to the rescue. Callie? Mino? Mino would definitely think he's in a nightmare again. His two best buddies come to save him just as he escapes himself, then he jumps out of a window that should surely kill him. And then a guy he speared is alive and here to save him as well. Don't move. You're doing great. Encouragement. Okay, so it feels like another crazy coincidence, but there's no reason she couldn't drive around until she wanted to stop where she needed to be. More importantly, it's another rule of cool sequence that ties nicely into the first extraction plan. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why are you helping us, Gally? I put a spear through your chest. Yeah. Nobody's perfect, man. Forgiveness. I may not be pretty, but we all know who the enemies are. Walton Goggins is killer in this scene. Not a ton to work with, but he still sells it like a pro. See, this is the problem you run into when you let a cranked out berserker Urukai be your leader. I mean, it does actually gain him access, but... Still a pretty sweet explosion. And this is about as epic as any young adult movie series has ended. All-out war that doesn't stop no matter what's happening in the foreground. This clearly took some planning and time, and it shows. I'm not leaving you. Even though you should? 
doing the right thing callback? Sort of have this problem where you can't walk away from people. Even when you should. I mean, this is some crazy stuff. It's not even the real focus of what's going on. Go. He's right. I can cover. I'd just like to point out how far Galli has come from the first movie where he was ready to offer up the Gladers to the Grievers as a sacrifice. Man, I love him in this film. <sighs> Newt owns this scene, drifting in and out of the flare. This has got to be one of the hardest things to watch. From day one in the Glade, Thomas's brand was no one left behind, save everyone. Then this entire movie has been about saving Mino, and in the process, the control starts slipping through his fingers to the point where he's literally dragging Newt to safety against his will. She isn't sick because, because you cured her. Going back to the confusion over the whole fear equals cure thing, I imagine this feels like a plot hole to some people. So what? They never tested Thomas's blood in all the years he worked for Wicked? Well, not after the maze. The fear induced in the maze is exactly what makes him the cure. And if you remember, he escaped into the Scorch before anyone could drain him. Tommy! Kill me! <sighs> oh, brutal. What is it about these young adult stories that think they need to end in some ridiculous tragedy? It's torture! They were so close! Objective achieved. I'm sad. But I will say, I think it was the nail in the coffin on Tommy's mission statement I was talking about earlier. He's always thought he knew best, but it's led to a lot of suffering. In choosing Teresa and the cure over Brenda and escape, he's making a selfless choice that seems counterintuitive to him. Newt needed to die for him to realize he can't just will things to happen a certain way. For whatever it's worth, from the time Ava gave up or accepted defeat, she started wearing this gray sweater. The only color other than white she wears in the entire series. Her feelings are really tied to her clothing choices. <laughs> Seems a little short-sighted, but we know he's trigger-happy in general, and as we soon find out, he's all flared up. So, not himself, and he wants to make sure he gets the cure for himself. We'll keep you alive. You will give life to the rest of us. Ones we choose to save, anyway. Kind of an inverse villain monologue. He's not talking about how or why he's going to kill him, he's talking about why he's going to keep him alive. Never really thought of Lord Baelish as the brawling type, but he throws a mean right hook. Overall, there is something cathartic about seeing them beat each other senseless. <laughs> Come up and... All things considered, even with this film's propensity to last minute save everyone, being trapped on the roof of a burning building is up there with the most terrifying circumstances I can imagine. Paisano's score really takes off here and actually makes you believe it all might be alright. And as far as an epic conclusion is concerned, this one is tense. Again, genuinely terrifying. I love that the destruction doesn't stop for anyone. It's such a great moment for Teresa getting some redemption and trying to save Thomas after betraying him. Ironically, still technically working for the cure, since that's what Thomas represents at this point. I imagine people probably had an issue with Teresa's death, similar to there being enough room on that door for Jack. Like, just jump. But, number one, there was a matter of seconds from when the building hit and the other started collapsing. It just seems longer because of the slow motion. And number two, I don't know, I think her guilt overwhelmed her, and a second of questioning if she deserved to live was too long. Also, her reflexes would be a little slowed after this. And, since she did make sure Thomas got on first, it is self-sacrifice. One last callback to the opening of the first film, with Thomas waking up having no clue where he is. Regardless of how long he'd been out, I like the acknowledgement that his wound is still healing and he's not 100% better like some movies do. Also, of course a bunch of kids who spent years trapped inside giant walls would want to settle down in some wide open spaces. So many have sacrificed so much to make this place possible. Alright, Barry, your main job is to just give big grand speeches. You good with that? Jokes aside, he's the man for the job and he brings everything full circle with the theme of this story. Memory. Remember those who gave their lives no matter how much it hurts. Immortalize them in stone so you never forget. Wes Ball didn't make it out alive? Something of an ambiguous ending. He could literally throw the cure into the ocean right after the scene since it's more symbolic at this point. I choose to believe it's one more spark of hope that he can fix things. He is staring at the boat. So, headcanon is that Thomas and Mino saved the world. Oh, and they also go back to the city real quick and find Teresa totally fine, and surprise, surprise, his blood didn't just cure the flare, it also cured, you guessed it, death. And Newt's totally fine now. Yay, never heard of page 250. So, people seem to agree that the books get a little convoluted and progressively worse, so the best thing I can say about this movie is that Wes Ball did the absolute best he could with the source material. This is a fully competent, beautiful to look at, well put together, structured and directed film. The story is a little all over the place. I get the feeling that Dashner wrote himself into a corner and didn't know how to get out of it. All jokes aside about my headcanon, for a story called Death Cure, a lot of people die. Everyone, everyone dies. 
I know, I get it, the death cure ended up being just quarantining the immunes and letting the world die. They cured the death of the human race. Which, I, I like that, but so much of the story's runtime, three movies worth, is about the cure for the flare. The ways they extract it and what circumstances immunes need to be thrust into in order to produce it. I won't spoil the book, it has a different take on the ending, which may actually undo even more of the preceding story, but the ultimate sentiment is the same. And I'm good with that sentiment. It subverts expectation for sure. The movie ends extremely bleak. Anyone that we know of who could possibly synthesize more of the cure or serum is dead. And Safe Haven is just a different, ironically slightly more heartless version of the Wicked City. Let the world die and we'll rebuild. I mean, at least inside the city they were trying to find a cure. So bleak, but still hopeful for the future. Humanity can go on even if it was all for nothing. The other problem with the story is something I'm torn about whether I can praise or not. The ambiguity of the good guys and bad guys usually plays well, and I do like the contrast to other YA stories. You could make an argument that Wicked was good, at least as a whole. They were trying to find a cure and Thomas kept messing everything up. I'm not saying 28 kids should be sacrificed to cure a pandemic, but it's not as cut and dry as rescue them and let the world die while you live out your lives on an island either. It's just hard to root for them when Thomas and crew are the reason Lawrence's anarchist psychos start blowing everything up. Not their fault, but they're at the very least complicit. The pacing was also a little strange. The third and final act arguably starts right here with them starting their infiltration of the building and there's still over an hour left. In fact, it's almost exactly halfway through the movie. I guess you could say the fourth act is when Thomas goes back to Wicked, but that's kind of the point, there was still trimming to do. There are some cliches here and there, but it's all for the fun of movie magic. And nothing really blows your suspension of disbelief. When your foundation is zombies, you can accept quite a bit. All that aside, Wes Ball still made a super entertaining film, and I give him so much credit for seeing this trilogy through. The action is fun and falls right in line with the rest of the running series, really, especially considering Considering the relatively modest budget, the effects and action are amazing. The performances were all great, I can even excuse most of the weird actions. And as tough as these perfectly timed and planned escapes are, it's not outside the realm of reality. Just because we didn't know where they were going or what the time frame was doesn't mean they didn't. This had been planned for months and this is as simple as driving around until you see an X. But the performances and relationships carried the film. I really enjoyed Galley's redemption after hating him so much in the first film. There's something rewarding about watching such a jerk face be helpful, compassionate, and do the right thing. Wait here, just... I'll find him. Even when he's trying to be a jerk face, he just... Hey, Greeny. Good luck. Yeah, Gally. Dylan O'Brien continues to impress. He just needs one role in a movie that people love and he'll be set. Already said Aiden Gillen was an awesome baddie. Everyone was great. However, the gold star goes to one man. The hardest part of this movie is also the most meaningful and a testament to that actor. Newton Thomas's friendship has been building from the first film and really solidifies in this one. So watching him turn and get so close to a cure is heart-wrenching. Newt switching back and forth between flared and normal like a dementia patient was so hard to watch and it's because he did such a good job. Another stray from the book that works really well for the film. Thomas Brody Sangster earned that gold star. And his final note to Thomas plays into the real theme of this film, memory. It's something that has been at least a motif from the beginning. Wicked steals the kids' memories before putting them into the maze as a way to make them start over. And then Newt's biggest fear is what eventually happens to everyone who gets infected. They forget their friends, they forget who they are, they even forget their humanity. Teresa chooses to hold on to her memories for that very reason, the people they've lost and let down. The cure can only be worth it if they honor them. Ultimately, it's a fun movie with a lot of compelling action that ties up loose ends and pulls the best message it can from the source material that may be a little muddled. Next week, a movie everyone seems to hate.